Welcome to the Longest Term Board Gaming Podcast. This is episode 55, top five games in 20 minutes or less. My name is Tyler. Hello, this is Kevin. And this is Matt. In this episode, we're going to talk about the games that we've been playing lately. Then we're going to get into some top five lists of games that you can play in a pinch in 20 minutes or less. Quick ones. There's a lot of good games to choose from. It's, it's been a while since we've recorded, so I'm excited to be back here in the uh, bedroom basement bedroom studio. Uh, we have a guest with us. Yeah, you may have heard a new voice in the uh, you know when we're announcing our names. So Matt, my brother-in-law, has joined us for a recording session. Welcome, Matt. Hello, thank you for having me. I'm pretty yeah. excited about this. Not to be confused with Matt the Rat from <laughs> Cabin Con. <laughs> you know what? I thought of the same thing <laughs> when we you know, invited Matt to be on. I'm like, hey, Matt the Rat. But no, it is not Matt the Rat. Not I'm probably Matt. significant better looking and have a little bit less yellow teeth. Uh, yeah, I think so. I yeah. think that's a safe bet. That's a safe bet. Well, Matt, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Tell the listeners a little bit about yourself. Maybe your gaming history. I am uh, Kevin's brother-in-law. He... Uh, Joined the family a while back when he married my sister. And uh, after a significant life-altering decision of divorce for me, I uh, spent a lot of time at uh, Kevin's house and we uh, played a lot of games and he fueled the addiction. <laughs> yeah, that's the, where the addiction, the addiction started, right? <laughs> the addiction's real. It's uh, several hundred games. Yeah. To, right. We played a lot of games back in the day, for sure. That was It was a tough time for you, unfortunately, but we played a lot of fun games and had a good time, so... It was it was good. And what's your handle on our Discord server? Petroman forty seven. Petroman two forty seven. Two forty seven. Two. You missed a two. Okay. <laughs> Dang it. Twenty four seven. Oh, there we go. Nice. nice. I like it. And like uh, it. you're in town for the weekend for the President's Day, right? Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Play some games. Yeah, we're going to play some games. Uh, we're going to break out uh, Ticket to Ride Legacy tomorrow. We're going to start that whole Legacy campaign. I'm excited. Awesome. Be good. Plus, we'll probably get a few other different games in there um, as well. But it's going to be a good, fun gaming weekend, I think. That's the plan, anyway. Hopefully. Yeah. What have you been up to lately, Kevin? Um, I'm just busy with work stuff and just normal life things. We, we were supposed to record last week with right. our wives. Which I'm look, I'm still looking forward to. I am episode. too. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, uh, we <laughs> had to convince Alicia to be on, but I think she's I think she's excited to be on. And then of course my family had uh, illness come through again. Right, had to cancel the recording. Uh, Tyson's not with us tonight, but uh, yeah. yeah, life stinks. This winter's been uh, <laughs> <laughs> the winter's been brutal. I feel like we've been right. sick more this winter than any other winter that I can ever remember. Yeah, and I I usually don't get sick, uh, but I it just hit me pretty hard over you know Christmas holiday. I had a cough that I just barely got over, and then my wife Alicia, she's uh, still struggling with the cough that started before Christmas. Yeah. It's like what is happening? Some sort of <laughs> crazy bugs going through everybody. It's, yeah, it's just not good. So hopefully your family starts feeling better. I hope so. I break through it, right? I'd like to not feel like death for once. I don't know. <laughs> I'm like I'm. I feel like I'm on the tail end of it. I'm like 80, 85 percent. With a bad cough still. So, right. Uh, but that's a lot better than 70 and 20 and 30%. So. Yeah, right, right. It's good to be recording again. Should we jump into some games that we've been playing lately? Let's do it. All right. All right, I'll start. I'll start. So, um, I've been playing. So, I love trick taking games. I actually got two tricky trick taking games recently, and both of them happen to be team trick taking games. Which I had never played a team tricking trick taking game before. Have you played one, Tyler? Uh, like, yeah, it's been a while, but like just the face card ones. Um, it's but been a yes, while. The answer it's is been a yes. long time, but yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Euchre, and there's another one. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. So this one's called Aram, and it is published by Pandasaurus Games. It's designed by Shreesh Bot, and then art done by Stevo Taurus. And I, I will say the art. And the graphic design on this game are awesome. Another thing, the cards are an odd size, which I do not have sleeves for. And I don't know if you have sleeves for me, oh, but, but they're like- we'll have to look. Yeah. So they're like uh, kind of narrow and long. 
Um, so they don't fit the standard sleeves, which is okay. They're really good. The card quality is really good on them. But um, so Aram, so what's this game about? So I'm actually going to read the little summary of what the game is. It says, after years of experimentation in your shared laboratory, you and your fellow alchemists have just successfully transmuted common metals into gold. Now all that is left is to perfect the formula, repeating the experiments to find the perfect combination of metals that produces the purest gold. Blah, blah, blah. This means nothing <laughs> to actually how the game plays, right? It's just, it's strictly a, a trick-taking game with a tacked-on theme. But it's kind of, it's kind of a cool theme, right? You're, you're transmuting metals into gold. All right, so the way that this game works is you have uh, five different common metals, okay? And then you have gold. So you, uh, you deal out all of the cards to the players except for two. Those two cards get placed face up. Um, there's numbers uh, ranging from one to 10 in each of the suits. If you are the start player, well, first of all, you and your team, you're going to bid on how many tricks you think you're going to win in the round, okay? Um, and the way you bid is you take a card from your hand and you place it face up in front of you. And that's going to be your bid. So if you think you can win three tricks, you place a three as long as you have a three in your hand. Then it goes around to the other players. They'll place a card down. Then your teammate gets to place a card. They will place a card. And then between the two of you, the higher number is how many tricks you think you can win. So if one teammate puts one, that probably gives a clue to the other teammate that I don't have a very good hand. I'm probably not going to be able to win. The other teammate puts five. You know, they think that they're going to win a lot of tricks. So you do that to start. Um, and then the start player will lead with any non-gold card. The trick of this game is that you can't follow suit with this, the same suit. So you have to play a different suit than, than was led, unless you play a gold card. If you play a gold card, the gold is trump. And whoever plays the highest gold card will win the suit. Or if no gold, gold, gold cards are played, the highest number wins the suit. Okay? Um, then uh, you win the trick, the round the round will end, and then if you win the trick, you get to start the next trick, okay? There's also a rule that says, if you want to change the bid value that is currently on the table, either yours or your, uh, your teammates, you can spend a gold from your pile, uh, your gold pile, and then swap the card from your hand with the bid card that's either in front of you or in front of your teammate. So if you don't like five, you don't think you're gonna win five, then you can swap it out with a three, for example. Okay, that's the main mechanic of the game. Um, the round ends immediately when any player cannot play a valid base metal card or, um, do, or doesn't want to play a gold card that they have in front of them. So that's how, how it wins. So if you win your bid, so as far as bidding goes, if you're under your bid, you don't get any points. If you're over your bid, uh, if you win more tricks than what you bid, you earn your bid value as points. And if you get your exact bid, you win the exact number of tricks that you bid and you double those points. Oh, nice. Okay. And then whoever has the most points wins. If you have gold cards in front of you, um, gold cards are worth one point each. If they're one to three, four to six, they're worth two points. And if they're seven to eight gold cards, they're worth three points. Okay. The way you get gold cards is you, if you are the lowest card played in a trick, you get that value of gold card. So if you're the lowest, it's a three, you get a three gold card. Um, that'll get you points at the end of the round. It'll also let you bid for winning tricks. Okay. If you win the round, uh, whoever you get this little gold token, if you win two rounds, your team wins two rounds, then you win the game. So it's either two or three rounds, depending on if you win the first two or if you split, then it's going to go to the third round. Um, this game is awesome. I loved it. It was a lot of fun. I played with Logan, um, Mark, and then was it Jason? I can't remember. Somebody at the big game night that was there. Um, but it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, Mark and Logan ended up winning. And the way that they won is Logan had this move that didn't even occur to me that he could do. <laughs> right? cool. So he switched, he like switched out his card for another card. Um, and it made it so he had all of one suit in his hand and he could pass. And he knew that we were under our bid value. So because he did that, he passed immediately, took us totally off guard and ended up winning the game. Wow. And I'm like, what are you doing? Because nobody around the table like, Logan, what are you doing? This is dumb. Why are you changing your bid? This is, this doesn't make sense. And he just had that look on his face. You know, the look that he gets. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he's like, and he played the card and he's like, uh, I pass. 
round over, you guys lose. <laughs> like, what <"Bah, laughs> the heck is happening? You know, it was like one of those cool big brain moments that nobody thought about. And, That's awesome. And the fact that this game allows you to, to do those types of things is really cool. I just thought, I thought it was a blast. It's one of those games. And what I like about trick taking games is the usually the rules are very easy, mm-hmm. but there's some fun strategic decisions that you can make. And this game allows for that, which is uh, really cool. So awesome. I, I liked it. I would definitely, it's a recommend for me. Yeah, I love trick taking games too. I remember playing Rook growing up, and that was always one of my favorites. And now in the hobby, there are so many good trick taking games, and it's just fun to explore them. So I'm excited to try this one out. I was playing uh, something else that night. It was Re- Revive or Clank Catacombs. Oh, it was Clank Catacombs. Clank Catacombs. Yeah, you're playing yeah, Clank Catacombs. I was yeah. playing Clank Catacombs, so I was happy. Which, which but, is another, uh, yeah, shouldn't feel bad about that. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know that I missed out on this, and, and you got a couple other uh, smaller games played that night that I missed out on, so yeah. I definitely want to check this out. Have you tried it at three-player, or have you only played it at four-player? I, I only played it at one time at four-player. There is three-player rules, and I haven't read through those. Um, but yeah, it plays either three or four. Cool. Uh, yeah. Awesome. So that is Aram. Check it out if you like trick takers. All right. So one of the games that I've been playing lately is actually on BGA. It hasn't been released yet. It's in beta. It's called Pixies. And this is a little card game. It takes like a half hour to play. Uh, two to five players. It's by it's published by Bombix. And the designer is Johannes uh, Goopy Galpy. Um, the cards, Goopy, <laughs> it's G O U P Y. Oh, so, sorry. Johannes Goopy. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I'm not sure the pronunciation on that. Yep. Uh, this is a new card game. Hasn't come out yet. It's got the same, uh, style cards as, um, sea salt and paper. Oh, awesome. So really it, nice. The, it, I think they're going to be the same. Okay. Right. I've only played on board game arena. Right. So, yep, yep. but it's got that same border. And then in seesaw and paper, you had like these, uh, it was origami and it was still photography of these origami. Uh, I don't know, things that had been created, like yeah. Yeah. the shark and the squid and stuff yeah, yeah. in origami. So this one, they're like these forest and other creatures that have been made out of like acorns and other things. And, they uh, are set up in these similar still photography environments, just like in Sea Salt and Paper with the origami, right? So the game plays a little bit differently, though. It is a card drafting game. You have a, a grid in front of you, a three by three grid, imaginary grid, right? And within the deck of cards, there are uh, one through nines. And a number of cards each round are going to be placed out and you're going to draft them in turn order and add them to your three by three grid. So if you draft the one, it's going to go in the one spot in the top left, draft the nine, it's going in the bottom right. Um, If you draft a card that you already have, you choose which one you're going to keep up on top. Okay. And any card at the end of the round, um, any cards that you have both one on top and one underneath, you're going to score that many points as the number on the card. Okay. 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 And there's a couple of other scoring things. Basically the round's going to end, uh, when someone fills up their three by three grid, everybody else gets equal turns and then you're going to score it based on what cards you have in front of you. So when you draft, a card that you already have, you're going to choose which one you're going to keep on top. If you would then draft another card of that number, so let's say I have two fours already and I, I'm forced to draft another four, I can put that face down in one of my other spots. And then if so, I would put it in the nine spot maybe. And then when I cover that up, um, I would get with a nine, then I would get nine points for those that spot at the end of the round. You also score uh, your biggest. A group of cards of the same color. In the first round, you play this game over three rounds. Uh, in the first round, you score two points per card in the in your biggest group of adjacent colors. Uh, three three points in the second round and four points in the third round. And then each card will have 
well, not all the cards, but some of the cards have little swirl icons on them. Those score points, and then some of them have X's, and those are negative points. Hmm. So you're just trying to score the most points. It's a really simple card drafting game. Uh, I could see you play. You could play this with younger children. Like I've said, I've so far I've only played it on Board Game Arena a number of times, and I've had fun with it. It's a nice little relaxing card game, kind of like Sea Salt and Paper. I'd I prefer Sea Salt and Paper over this one, uh, but I think it's going to have the same type of nice quality cards uh, that came from that nice. production. And it's just a fun little card I, game. I, I look forward to playing this with my little guy, and and uh, you know I'm definitely going to get a hard copy of it at some point and. Uh, play with the family so i do love the art or you know like the still like, photography yeah, of the, the little photography. creatures yeah. yeah it looks awesome yeah well we should play it on board game arena it's it's pretty simple it takes about two minutes to learn the rules so yeah i don't think many people have probably voted on the complexity at this point on bgg <laughs> but it's rated a one yes. currently yes but there's only 36 ratings so yeah <laughs> it's, it's, so it's like it's very new right yeah it's yeah. very simple i'm i assume it's coming out sometime this summer i think i've seen it on pre-order on places but yeah that's awesome. So, no, it looks fun, great. Fun little uh, game that was available on uh, Board Game Arena, so I was excited to try it out. That is Pixies from Bombix. Did I mean, did you want I to have, go or anything, Matt? I, I, I do. I, I've been playing, uh, we've gotten in a couple rounds of Aeons and Outcasts. Nice. Um, it's uh, from Indie Board and Cards, designed by Sydney. Is that Egglestein and Nick Little and Kevin Riley. This is just a further expansion in their series of games. I think they just had one go live on GameFound this time instead of Kickstarter. That's right. Yeah. More we're, ands and more coming. Ends. We're in the cycle. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, every six months, you either got an ands end or an Astro Knights Kickstarter going. Yeah. Yeah. Right. They just, Which is awesome. Like, who doesn't just, want more ands end, right? Yep. Yeah. It's one of our favorite games to get to the table. And you, it's fun. you you backed that new game found, right? Remember? I did back the new game found. All the new parts are coming. Oh, then did you awesome. buy that's duplicates awesome. of extra stuff so you can give Kevin more stuff? Because you gave him <laughs> no, the, the player right. play mats, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, there was an accident in ordering, and I didn't realize that there was four player mats in the package. And I was like, oh, player mats. I thought it said two, but I ordered four. Two Your, sets of four. So Kevin was a winner there. Yeah. Hey, if, there's, if there's another happy accident, I'm <laughs> yeah. all for it. <laughs> so Aeons and Outcasts, um, this is one that I have in addition to the base game. And that's all I have. But I haven't actually gotten into it. Is is there that much that's different that from? Um, it's a campaign mode. So you start, it just goes through a story kind of like the legacy does, but you don't destroy or alter cards. And there's just, some envelopes to open up. Open envelopes, it gives you more nemesis and tells you to open certain decks of cards and adds more spells and gems. And awesome. So really, and if you don't want to go through the campaign, you can just open everything. You can right? just open, yeah. but open it all. Who wants That's to do not that? Fun. Who wants to do that, right? Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The story's really good. It's, it goes along with the legacy game. They kind of play them in order. Mm-hmm. I think before this was new age that followed the legacy game so yeah so i just um i just started ands and legacy and the story is really good is it yeah it awesome. is and it's kind of kind of sucked us in even though we're only one game in but you mentioned the story in outcasts it's kind of it's it's a cool world that they've built right with the the breach mages and the nemeses and and their backstories and all this kind of stuff and i love how you can flip over each um uh, you know, breach mage Matt, and there's there's backstory you can read about him there. You know, and I'm sure that's how it is with Outcasts, right? Yeah, it's exactly how it is with Outcasts. And so far, we've gotten we lost the first round pretty horrifically, but which happens, in which the happens, <laughs> yeah. right? it was great. But the second round came down to a no biter, like usual, and yeah, we got lucky on a card flip and didn't die. So. Awesome. <laughs> I, I love games like that. And like you said, that happens so often in Aeon's End. It's like it, it's a game that reminds me of uh, you know, Cthulhu Death May Die, which is very similar where it comes down a lot of times to the last die roll or, you know, it's a nail biter to the end, and that's exactly how Aeon's End is. So that's cool. And and more cards and more options is always a good thing. Yep. Everything plays with each other. They've done a fantastic job with uh, their card backs. They're all the same color. There's no... Oh, yeah. It's all the same. So you can intermix everything from every 
legacy base game, all of it. That's yeah, awesome. I have to buy special colored backs because the printings were wrong. Oh yeah, yeah, not, that drives me nuts. <laughs> when yeah, you have a uh, an expansion that comes where you're supposed to throw in cards and they're different colors and it affects the gameplay. <laughs> you know, you're like, oh, so. that's a new card. I want that one. Yeah, exactly. That's cool. Very nice. Um, so another game that I've been playing, Lorcana. I'm into o- the Inklands. Uh, t- that's going to be what I'm excited about. We can talk about it. We can talk about it right now. Actually, yesterday, um, so pre-orders went up at Night Owl again because they did an initial batch of pre-orders for uh, End of the Inklands, uh-huh. and then they opened up pre-orders yesterday at ten o'clock. So it's funny. I had a work meeting at ten, so I was kind of attentive during my work meeting, but I was refreshing the page to see as soon as it came up, and yeah. I, I pre-ordered uh, a booster box of twenty-four. Um, I spent way too much money. And then there's, they, they have these things called troves, right? And the troves are just uh, storage solutions. Um, and they come with eight boosters in the trove. And then they get, usually you get a booklet with them that gives some backstory about Lorcana, which is pretty cool. And then I bought uh, both of the starter decks that came out as well. So pretty pricey. But these come out um, a week from tomorrow is the pre-release at the game shop, game shop. So I got to go pick them up then. And uh, I, you know, texted my daughter and said, we're going to have a, an awesome time <laughs> on Friday when we're, you know, cracking these packs. It looks like they've just about sold out. They still have some starter decks available. Yep. But. So the Trove sold out almost immediately. Um, the booster box was not long after that. Um, the, uh, the collector's box is the only thing I didn't get. Um, yeah, you know, I was not interested in that. Plus, I didn't want to spend another thirty bucks. I think is what that costs. So, um, they, they've they've spoiled all of the cards. There are some incredible cards that are coming out. There's this, this doesn't have the uh, Ducktales though. Is that the yes. next set? No, that's the set. Oh, it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but the, the the card I'm most uh, excited about is is a Jafar Enchanted. That it looks incredible, uh, and the the card ability on it it's, it's the type of card where you can just build a deck around it it just sounds like so much fun to play um so now you can have jafar fighting ariel and scrooge mcduck all at the same time oh yeah yeah you can awesome have, and you can have um you know uh ariel singing friends on the other side i mean <laughs> you have all these oh and it introduces you got me talking about Lorcana. <laughs> nice job. Uh, so you got these locations that are new. So you can go to, um, you know, Neverland. Um, you, you visit these locations. And, and depending on where you go, you can get certain benefits and card synergies. And um, just the, the options are endless on how you can build your deck. So I'm, I'm excited for you to pick up Star Wars Unlimited. So I think I, Star Wars Unlimited comes out a week later. Like March 1st, I think, I think yes. right? Yes, yep. And yeah. I pre-ordered some same from the same store, Night yep. Owl Games. And uh, yeah, I'll be picking those up, and I'm excited. So Yeah, I so I, I got to play it at uh, Gen Con, and it was fun. I mean, it has the whole concept of, uh, you know, uh, land battles and air battles, and you got your... Your big, you know, big, big bad. I played as Luke, and then you can play as Darth Vader. And I did get some promo cards there, yeah. And uh, I put them in some hard sleeves because I don't know if they're they, they, they might you know, they might be worth something. they might be worth something. Yeah. You know? I still think it's kind of random that they released uh, Star Wars: The Deck Building Game, right? Like <laughs> last year. And yeah. I haven't heard of any expansions or anything for that. So was that like a one-time thing? It felt like that game was easily expandable. Oh, super easy. And it was fun. But then are they going to do both? It's kind of weird if they well, keep both fan- of them going. Fantasy Flight did both of them. Yep. So I don't know. I it, think they can totally do it because Because the deck building game is kind of a self-contained thing, right? Yeah. And then obviously um, Unlimited is a TCG. So it's just a different animal. Uh, get ready to spend a lot of money, though. Lorcana is more expensive. <laughs> it is. It is. Because I, I, well, I bought why? a booster box for 90, 94 I think I got a 10% off or yeah. something. And yeah. Lor- Lorcana is 140 for, And plus, you're, you're only getting 12 cards per booster. And I think you're getting more cards per booster in Unlimited. And the reason why it's more expensive is because Disney. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? that's true. It's because they can. Uh, uh, with a name I like think, Star Wars, too. But well, yeah. Star Wars is under Disney, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think the appeal is a little bit more for. Uh, it's tough to say though. For Lorcana, I think maybe appeals to a wider audience, and maybe they think they can 
charge more for it. Well, and, and its just, launch was incredible. Insane. So yeah, they're gonna ride that while they can, and right. and hopefully it. I mean, has some longevity there. So I hope it's around for a long time. Well, my bank account doesn't, but. I, I mean, yeah, but you're going to get some good polls that you're going to turn around and sell. And, and that's what I've done. Like if I get an Enchanted, I'm going to sell it. Right. Yeah. So, and I've gotten some good money out of the two that I've pulled, which I realized I was incredibly lucky to get those because there's people that open hundreds of packs that don't even get one. And we pulled, we got two on the same night. Yeah. So I'm that's like, awesome. fingers crossed that, that, uh, when we have our pack opening on a week from tomorrow, we get a few more Enchanted. But. Well, and you got to time the sale of those. Right, too. Because you do. Before the market starts getting flooded with them, you got to. So that's why. It's got to be a quick turnaround. I listed them immediately, right? Yeah. And I was able to get a little bit more. But it's funny. It's like, I don't understand the TCG market at this point. I just, I don't. Because there's, there's a site called TCG Player where you can go get current market prices for everything. Uh-huh. And uh, some of those cards were going back up in value, you know. And, and first set cards, I think, for any TCG are going to be more valuable. But. I'm, 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 this is a whole new world for me. Yeah. <laughs> right? So you, you were going to talk about something else. Though. I was. You completely <laughs> derailed me. <laughs> I saw the squirrel run by. So. Yeah, exactly. You scrolled me. <laughs> I don't know. You get me talking about Lorcana. It's just, uh, it's a fun game. And it's it's allowed me and my daughter to spend some quality time together, which is the most important thing. So any amount of money is worth worth that. So it's been really cool. The game I was going to talk about, though, is, um, so, I, so one of my all-time favorite games uh, it's in my top five. I w- you know, I was thinking about maybe doing, we should do another top 30 or something because I think mine has changed a lot. I think mine has too. Yeah. That's so fun. it'd be interesting to see that. But I, so um, 51st State is pro- I think it's my number two game of all time now. It's, it is so much fun. I love it That's every, awesome. every time I play. This game that I played recently is called Imperial Settlers. And this is kind of a, a sequel to 51st State. It's designed by the same guy, Ignacy Trevichek, uh, published by Portal Games. Um, art is done, it looks like art is credited to a bunch of different artists. Um, the art is uh, kind of whimsical art. Yep. Um, it's If you look at the art for 51st State, it's more kind of... Uh, uh, it's rougher, I guess you could say, right? It's post-apocalyptic, and, and that's how the art comes out in 51st State. This one's like really whimsical. This is a um, a civilization game, and it plays very similar to 51st State. It's a tableau builder. Um, you're trying to get the most points by uh, building up your tableau. And this one is you're building up um, your lands. You're discovering new lands. It's very much a civilization game. The differences, I'm not going to go over really how it plays. I'll talk a little bit about the differences between this one and 51st State. So this one, probably the thing that I enjoy most about this game is that you have your own faction. So you're either the uh, Romans, the Barbarians, the Egyptians, or the Japanese, okay? And you have your own faction deck. So in 51st State, everybody has a common deck and you're drafting from that common deck. In this game, you have your own faction deck and you can draft from that deck or you can draft from the common deck. And each faction kind of specializes in a different thing in a unique thing, which is really cool. I love that. Um, the the trade-off for having your own faction deck is in in 51st State, you can raise any card from your hand. And when you do that, let's say you burn down a school or something, you get spoils from doing that. In in this game, your faction deck, you cannot raise those cards, okay? But they're a little bit more powerful. And you get them down into your area in a little bit of a different way. So you have to have what's called a foundation. 51st state, you have to have ruins. Mm-hmm. Um, this one, you have a foundation. So if somebody raises one of your common buildings, it turns into a foundation. Then you have to use that foundation plus some other items like wood and stone to get that down. But it's going to be a super powerful card. So that whole having your own faction deck is really interesting and really cool. I like that. Um, <clears throat> this one also isn't a race to 25. This is played over five rounds, and then whoever is done, you know, has the most points after five rounds wins. So that's a little bit different. Um, th- this one, this one has more raising than in Fifty First State. Really? Yeah. Which, you wouldn't think of that based on the art style. No, you wouldn't at all. But 
holy cow, were we attacking each other? <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> like uh, Dan, I played with Dan and Mark. Dan was the Japanese. He sent his samurais over to get my stuff so many times. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> but I, I wasn't even mad because it was so thematic. It was just, it was hilarious. And I got the same feel. You know how, you, you know, you played 51st Date once. It's almost like it's you're role-playing the characters and you kind of get into the yeah. setting. Yeah. I got that same feel with Imperial Settlers, which surprised me because of the whimsical theme. Uh -huh. But Dan was sending over his ninjas. Mark was the barbarians causing all kinds of havoc. And the, the reason why you attack a little bit more is because you use raised tokens instead of the red contact tokens in 51st State. So if you have two raised tokens, you can go attack somebody. And it seems like the tokens are a little bit easier to get. So um, there was just a lot of back and forth, a lot of raising, um, a lot more interaction, at least in the game that we played, than 51st State. So I thought it was fun. So after I played, I started thinking, do I need both of these? You know, do I need both 51st State of and Imperial Cellar? <laughs> and I, I think I'm going to keep it, right? Really? Because it gives me a little bit of a different feel. Um, another cool thing is you buy expansions and it adds cards to your faction deck and you can actually deck build and customize your deck. So you have to have 30 cards. You can swap in and out whatever cards that you want. That's There's cool. a few different rules. So once you play enough, you can totally just customize it yeah, to however you want to play, which that concept doesn't exist in 51st state. So I think there's enough differences and a little bit of a different feel that it's, it's worth having both, at least for me. It, at least for me. It feel like it played a little bit quicker because it has the definitive five round end or Nope. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. It was actually a pretty long play. Oh, okay. And it's funny. I think first almost, play though or Yeah, it was first play, but um both so Mark has played fifty first state a lot. Dan has played at two, least two or a three couple times. times. Yeah. So we got into it pretty quick after I explained the differences. And I think every game of fifty first state that I've played has been five rounds. So, so really? yeah, huh? I think it always ends up being five rounds. Okay, so, cool. So it was about the same play time. One thing I will say, Mark is my nemesis in this game. Oh, okay. I cannot beat him. I don't know what it is. He is so good at 51st state and he, he won Imperial Settlers too. I don't uh -huh. know. It's just one of those games he's good at, but it's, it's funny. I don't, I love every play regardless of winning right. or losing just because it's, it's one of those games. It's just fun to play, you know? I feel like I'm getting more and more to that point with every game that I play. Like, I feel like I'm starting to care less and less about actually winning and just the experience, the experience. of playing the game and being around the table with friends or family or whatever it is. And Absolutely. I mean, it's always a nice bonus. I'm not going to say I don't want to win. It's but always satisfying. Yeah. I mean... There was a, a one point Teo victory the other day. On oh, AGA. Yeah, I could not believe that. That was awesome. That it was, felt so good. Yeah, that was a well done on that one. I, I just lost a little bit of steam in the last round. Uh -huh. And I'm like, and I could see we got squirrel again. I could see that, <laughs> <laughs> that you were going to get the, to the top of two tracks. Uh -huh. And I was one, I was literally one Coco away from being able to take the, uh, the ascension action where I get two steps. Uh huh. One Coco. I that, was, that was the game right there. I was doing everything I could to place my workers in places that I thought you would go to to chart I, I to love make that. you I pay love as that. much Coco as possible because I I was worried about you getting to both. Yeah, the top. And that of both was my tracks. goal because the, the the track that I didn't get to was the bonus for the dice. Yep. And I had four dice out. And it would have gotten me quite a few points. Yeah. And the fact that we understand that game enough where you're thinking about going to places that I'm going to go to to make me spend more cocoa is awesome. Yeah, and I we played that game a, over 100 times, right? Easily. And it's yeah. still it – is, it's, that is so much fun. I love it. Yeah. Sorry. What were we talking about? <laughs> Imperial Settlers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Isn't it fun talking about games? This is it great. is. Yeah. It's been a while. It, it, it feels so good just to be around the table talking about games. Uh, I completely agree. So – um, anyway, love Imperial Settlers. Um, like I said, it's staying in my collection. I may start collect, you know, getting some of the expansions as well. So it's, it's a good one. If you like Tableau Builders, if you like 51st State, absolutely give it a try if you haven't. Um, if the theme is more appealing to you than a post-apocalyptic theme, go for this one if you like the Civ Builder type theme. So, and it, it, yeah. this one also was re-implemented by... Uh, Settlers of the North, right? Have you played that one? I, I have not 
played that one. But I, think I think that one collect, is, was collecting some yeah. of the different expansions for that one. But I'm interested in playing it, but I, I think it changes it up. A, I don't think it's um, as similar as you know Imperial Settlers is to Fifty First State. Mm-hmm. I think it switches it up a little bit, but I, I'm not as I'm not familiar with that one. It's one I want to play though for sure. Cool. Definitely my one of my favorite Portal games. Awesome. So that is Imperial Settlers. Awesome. So another game that I've been playing is also on Board Game Arena, and this one's actually an alpha. So exclusive access. Exclusive, yes. <laughs> uh, message me on Board Game Arena or on our Discord, and I will send you an invite. That's right. Uh, this is River Valley Glassworks, and this is actually going to be an all play Kickstarter next month in March. Um, and all play is, of course, the kind of the board game division part of board game tables. Yep. Um, so, I was gonna. I was gonna talk about an all play game in the play later. Lunar is all play. Yes, which is another uh, team trick taker. But yeah, they got good games. Yeah. So uh, this is designed by Adam Hill, Ben Pinchback, and Matt Riddle, and the art is by Andrew Bosley. So you know the art's gonna be good. It is a beautiful little game where you have river tiles in front of you. And on these river tiles, you're going to put these different shaped stones on each tile, okay? So there's different segments that break up the river, and then there's uh, a a pool at the end. And then you have your own player board. So what you're going to be doing in this game is you're going to be drafting. On your turn, you're either going to play a stone, one of these glass tiles, out of your hand, um, and select a river tile adjacent to it and take the river tiles or the stones off of that river tile and add them to your board. And then that river piece is going to shift to the left. New pieces are going to get added. So the river is constantly changing and what pieces are available um, and uh, new ones will be added and filled in where people draft the stones from the existing tiles. So when You add it to your board, and you're adding them left to right. There are, uh, I believe, uh, 10 colors, I think, maybe eight. Um, And some of them have a higher probability of coming up. So, And it shows you the probability order on your player board. And so the game plays until somebody has 17, I think 16 or 17 stones on their board, and then uh, everybody gets a final turn, and then you score your board based on the stones that you've drafted over the course of the game. If you're ever out of stones uh, that you would play with from your hand, you can select them from the big pool, um, and and that's your turn. That turn, you're not pick, picking any other stones to add to your board. You're taking stones back that you're then going to select different uh, tile pieces later. Um, any overage of tiles that you would take they go in a a section or they go in your top right corner and it's kind of like the penalty box on the azul board you take negative three points per stone at the end of the game for those so at the end of the game after somebody gets to 15 or 16 or 17 uh, stones on the board everybody's going to score their board you score your two tallest stacks of stones okay and you're and you're stacking them by color on your player board uh, and everything to the left of your board, each column to the left is worth far fewer points. You're trying to build it as far as you can to the right and then grow big on the right. Okay. 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 So you're going to score points for your two tallest stacks. And, but if there's a tie, it's the one furthest to the left. So if I have, you know, four stones in my far right column, I'm going to score a ton of points. But if I then, and that's my second highest, but then I act, I have to draft something that makes me make my first column a four, a four then I'm going to score the first column instead. And Doesn't it's going like to be worth like six or seven points. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, you also get, you also score for each row, how far they get up until uh, the point that there's a gap. So if you go all the way across your bottom row, I think it's like 22 points. Uh, The next row, if you only go a few pieces, it's like four points or something uh, before you get to your gap. So you're, it's a, it's a really interesting, another drafting game, a little, got a little bit more meat to it than Pixies does, which I just talked about. Um, But beautiful art and just really fun family weight game. I could see this doing really well 
uh, for the Kickstarter next month. But I've been playing it a bunch. I've got five or six games going. I initially didn't realize that the uh, game ended so quickly. So I had these plans for, like, I got to the point where I had, in a, in a few games, I had all the high probability stone colors all far to the right. But then it was like, this is the last round. The end game was triggered. And I was like, oh, no, I, I was just about to start growing those like crazy and score a ton of points. So I figured it out what the end game trigger is. Just a fun little game. I'm excited to keep playing this on uh, Board Game Arena. It's in alpha, like I said, so not available to everyone. But if you uh, have alpha access, then definitely uh, try this one out. And and definitely check out the Kickstarter. Because, you know, I I think it's pretty incredible what All Play does with their simple, lightweight games. They're, they're constantly pushing out new games. You go to any con that they're at, they've got yep. tables out, a bunch of different tables. They're teaching a different game on each table. They just run things so smoothly. I think there's no doubt that they put up some of the highest numbers for sales at, at cons. And uh, well, that, just another little beautiful game here. So. Well, the, the, ugh, this one looks awesome. I'm, I'm definitely going to check this out. But uh, like Pies, Pies that I recently played, I, that was at the same game night we referenced earlier. That's an all play game. Super, like the rules are literally uh, a page and a very small page, right? Yeah. Maybe front and back, and that's it. Right? Their, so yeah. their games are also shelf conservative. Oh, they, yes. They come yes. in tiny little compact boxes, and you can put fifteen on a, a small section of a Kalax, and yeah, absolutely. And all their instructions are literally front page, back page. That's it. Yeah, Super Super is cool. amazing. Uh, Mountain goats, they put Mountain out as goats well. Is, uh, yeah. Sequoia, Sequoia is, is a great game. That's a really I really, good really one. liked uh, Big Top. That was the oh, auction yeah. game that w- we had an epic moment with the mm-hmm. first time we played it. And right, I don't know. They they do a nice job with their uh, their games. It's it's fun to see them success. So awesome. So that is River Valley Glassworks. Nice. All right. Tyson's our transition guy. He's not here. <laughs> right. So <laughs> what do uh, we do? Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about our top five now. <laughs> yeah. So I think that wraps up the games we've been playing lately. Let's get into our top five lists. We uh, had this idea. Kevin had this idea and we ran with it after we uh, had to adjust due to illness last week. Right. Right. We had a Valentine themed uh, episode with our wives going. And then I thought, Hey, Matt's going to be in town. Let's get him on the show. Yeah. Right? Sure. I'm happy to be here. Yeah. Right. Right. So we're going to talk about our top five games to play in 20 minutes-ish or, or less. 20 minutes-ish or less. Yeah. I, I I mean, we break the rules a lot in this uh, Yeah, I think there's podcast, some gray but... area here a little bit. but <laughs> Right. But I, I tried to keep all my games. Like the, the box says 20 minutes or less. That's what I tried to keep my games to. Yeah, me right? too. <laughs> yeah. I, I, tell, I, I could tell you're not 30. lying. So 20, say twenty to thirty, but right most yeah. of the time if yeah, you're or, not, or if I know if getting squirreled, like if Logan and I, this says thirty minutes, but Logan and right. I could knock it out in fifteen. So I mean, oh, okay, uh, okay, yeah. I'm interested to see what games are on this list. Then this is going to be good. I like it. Uh, who's who's starting? Why don't you start? Let's. Okay. Uh, I I will happily start. Um, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna start uh, this list off with a bang here. Okay. Um, and it's not <laughs> bang the dice. Here. <laughs> I threw you off there, didn't I? Uh, you threw did. you off there, didn't I? So this game, we have referenced this game on uh, the podcast before. It gets uh, far too little coverage, I think, in my opinion. Um, fantastic game. This game brings in the nostalgia, right? I don't know. Do you know? Do you... I thought it was going to be Bang the Dice game. So I'm Monster Crunch. Oh, Monster Crunch. Crunch. Breakfast oh, battle on. game. All right. We haven't talked about this one for a long time, oh, and gosh. it is due for more airtime on right. podcast. All right. Am I right, Matt? Absolutely. Fantastic Mo- game. Moving on. And yeah. the game you can play via FaceTime. This is that was going to be one of the things I was going to say about it. So uh, I love this game, and one of the reasons why I brought it up is because I have backup now. 
Nat is here, and Nat loves the game as he well. He likes both the choices, too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's more choices than just two. All right. So real quick, I won't go over a lot about how this plays, but this is a ladder game. You have cards from 1 to 12. You, um, you get dealt a certain number of cards each round. You play a card, and then it uh, goes around the table. The other players have to play equal to or higher than the card uh, that was previously played. You're trying to get rid of all the cards in your hand. Um, you get negative points, or you get points for each card you have, and you're trying to get the least amount of points. Isn't that how it works, Matt? No, it's cards left over. You want the least amount of cards left over at the end of the game. Yes, you want the least amount of cards left over at the end of the game. Okay, anyway, um, the trick is, and the cool part of the game... <laughs> You're going to love this, Tyler, in case you forgot. You have milk tokens, right? <laughs> so you can oh trade gosh. in a milk token to combine two cards that are the same number um, to create a higher number. And if you have multiple milk tokens, you can do that multiple times. Or you can um, combine cards that are uh, in a row. So like a five and a six or a five, six, seven. You can combine those cards. And it just adds to the value that you have on currently on the stack. That makes it harder for other people to play cards. It gets rid of your cards quicker. So there's a lot of decisions, a lot of strategy mm -hmm, on when you mm -hmm. play those milk tokens <laughs> and how you get rid of your cards. Okay. Not only that, you have individual player abilities. Booberry, for example, has two player abilities that he can take um, throughout, the, throughout the game. <laughs> Another layer of strategy. Oh it's amazing. Um, and uh, every – so there's Booberry. There's a f um, Fruit Brute. There's um, – Count Chocula. Count Chocula. Uh, there's there's five different monsters that you can be. Um, it's it's obviously – you know, this is the nostalgia of the game. Uh, if you ate – you know, these monster cereals growing up, then you're going to like the game a little bit more. But I actually think it's a fun game and has some, good, has some good fun decisions. The complexity and, is on par with like Llama. It's, I think it's a little bit higher than Llama, <laughs> but it's definitely not a complex game. Yeah. <laughs> no. But you like this one, right, Matt? It is. It's a great game. Yeah. Easy to teach. You can play it long distance. So, so we play over FaceTime. Um, we used to play a little bit more over FaceTime than I have lately because life just got busy. But I think my really three-year-old would enjoy this one. <laughs> what, eating the cards? No, I think, <laughs> I think he could pick this up and uh, it could be fun. Maybe I'll give it another shot. You should. You All should right, absolutely. You should. So that is my number five uh, game you can play in under 20 minutes, Monster Crunch. Nice. Yeah. I'll go next. So uh, my number five is a roll and write game. And it's one of the... OG roll and write games. Nice. Uh, I, I mean, I played Yahtzee growing up, but uh, right. my wife and I got this years ago, and I don't know. We've played it dozens, if not hundreds of times in bed before we go to bed sometimes. Uh, this is Quix, Q-W-I-X-X. -X. Love it. This, is, this game's been around forever. We've gifted this to probably every family member we have and many friends over the years. We have a lot. We've had a lot of fun with it. The fun thing about this roll and write, similar to uh, like that's pretty clever. When someone else is rolling dice and taking their turn, everybody gets to play because there are two white dice, and whatever number that the two white dice uh, add up to, anybody can use that number. And then the player who rolled the dice can also take an additional. Uh, number, which is a combo of one color and a white die. So there are four colors. There's uh, blue, green, ye uh, yellow, and red. And they go, the yellow and reds on your player board go from 1 to 12, and the blue, green go from 12 to 1. And when you write in a number on your, in one of these colors on, in one of these rows, the next time you fill in something in that row, it has to be to the right of your your most recent uh, check mark or the most recent number that you filled in. So you, you don't want to just – if you're filling in red, which is 1 to 12, you don't want to just jump to 7, right? You want to try and get the 1 and then the 2 or and then the 4. and You're trying to get as many numbers filled in as you can in each row because – they uh, exponentially score more points based on how many uh, you filled in in that row. Eventually, you start locking numbers. Uh, you get a bonus uh, if you can lock a number, and then you don't no longer roll that colored die um, for the rest of the game. Uh, eventually, the game ends, and everybody tallies up 
their points. I think it's when three numbers get locked. Two. Two. Two numbers get locked. And um, then you tally up your points and see who wins. Like I said, my wife and I have played this a ton uh, just over the years and gifted it to many people. And it's a fantastic little roll and write game. And, you know, now there, it's, there's so many other roll and write and flip and write games. But for us, this was the one that we started playing after we got into hobby gaming, I guess. Yeah. So we, we have the, um, the big version. Okay. Yeah. The Super with dry race markers. And- yep. Exactly. Big chunky dice. You know, it's the yeah. same game. Um, it has like a variant on the back though that switches up the colors quite a bit. Oh, that, cool. That we played, which uh, is a you, lot of fun. So we've been playing Quicks for years. You might need to get on and order. They have another pad out there that changes up and puts all the colors on every row. Oh, okay. And cool. mixes all the numbers up on every huh. row, so you could have like a yellow seven over here and a red eight, and it. it it really adds huh. to the game. I'll yeah, it kind of makes out. your brain hurt a little bit. It makes bit. your brain hurt a little yeah. bit because yeah. you're like, yes, I need that seven yellow. And you look down and you realize you need a red yellow uh, or a red yeah. eight. And seven yellows at the end of the row. That's not doing me any good. Yeah, yeah. We, we laminated our cards a long time ago. Yeah, that's and, the way to do it. ran out of the original pad years ago. So nice. Yeah. Fun little roll and write game to play. Definitely can finish this in under 20 minutes. That was my number five. So quick Quicks. little game. Yeah. Quick Hell, little game. Little game. Little game. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh, I'm glad I nixed, nixed that off my list. Ooh, nice. Oh, nice. Okay. Because it was up there. Instead, I've got for my number five, what the heck? Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. This made my short list. Short list, yep. It's a quick little card game, uh, hidden secret bids. Um, there are cards in your hand from one to 15. 10, no, 1 to 15, right? 1 to 15, I think. 1 to 15, and then you're bidding on the card in the center of the table, and it goes from negative 5 to 10. And if you have a negative number up on the table, it's low card wins, and a positive number is high card wins. So you've got to play who's going to play what. Yeah, it's very much a game of trying to get in your opponent's head, (laughs) right? And trying to figure out what they're going to play. Because there's nothing worse than bidding for a 10 with a 15 and tying. Because if you tie... Then it goes to to the the next person. Then it goes to the next person down. You're like, I burned my 15 for nothing. But on the flip side, there's nothing better than winning a 15 with a one, which (laughs) I have done before. And that is awesome. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Or vice versa. Someone else gets a really crappy card when they played a high number but because everybody else below them tied yes it goes up to them i don't know it's, yeah it was a lot of fun it was a lot of fun and it is it's one of those classic games been around since the 80s so yeah it's had so many variations of names uh it's just been crazy it's been around for a long time i think it'd be older than the 80s it could be yeah i think it's one that shines with subsequent plays around the table with the same people at the same time yes because then you're you're reading the players hey he did this last game this is how he's gonna maybe approach it this game i don't know it's it's a lot of fun yeah you see trends it's very much like skull in that in that way yeah this is this is my kind of party game Right. I don't like, and I consider this a party game because it's, I don't like the games where it's like, Hey, run around the table and tap, you know, hop on one foot and tap your stomach, you know, it's like stuff like that. I, I don't, I don't like those, but this, this one is, to me, it feels like a party game. It's very, very light and uh, very fun, but with some tough decisions to make, I think. Yep. Yeah. Good choice, Matt. Good choice. That was All a better right. choice than your choice. <laughs> oh, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> um, you just don't like Monster Crunch. Uh, it's, it's, that is true. This is well documented. Serial based uh, gameplay. He doesn't like serial based <laughs> games. Ladder based games. Spicy? You like spicy? Yeah, I do like spicy. That's that's the best that's, one. That's the one exception. You yeah. could argue that Quix is a roll and write ladder game. You could <laughs> argue that. You do. Maybe this is your favorite genre. You know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so my number four um, is done by Peter Wickman. Art's done by Fiore, I'm sorry, Gumbg, G-M-B-H is the last uh, name. Um, published by Abacus Spiel. This is number nine. So number nine, 
Number nine. <laughs> it's another one Tyler loves. <laughs> so uh, number nine, it's a stacking game where you have numbers from zero to nine. Okay, And you are trying to stack them on top of each other to score points. You score points by getting numbers on higher levels. So if you get um, on the first level, you're going to score whatever the value of that number is. If you get on the second level, you're going to times by two. Uh, well, third level, you're going to times by two. Um, fourth level, you're times it by three. The higher you get, the more value you're going to get for your numbers. So the whole goal is to try to get that number nine as high up in the stack as you can to score the most points. Whoever has the most points at the end of the game wins. The trick is that when you stack, you have to stack numbers so that they overlap at least two tiles or two numbers underneath that tile. And you can't have any open, you can't cover any open spaces. So the zero, for example, has a big hole in the middle. You can't cover that hole with a tile on the top. Okay. So it's very strategic on how you're going to build your base, how you're going to build your numbers, get them higher and uh, score the most amount of points. And it's, these types of games are fun for me because it's just, it's fascinating to see how everybody's brain works in a little bit of a different way and how their stack is going to be different. It's, it, it gives me the same feel that uh, Railroad Inc. gives me. Like when you're done with Railroad Inc., mm -hmm. vastly different railroads that everybody builds out of the same dice, right? So this is the same type of game uh, in my mind. So, uh, And then the thing that's probably coolest about the game is you could set it up and start playing in about 35 seconds because <laughs> you pull the box out. It's all organized, ready to go. You shuffle the deck and then you can start playing. It's just super quick. Um, then you can knock out, knock out games well under 20 minutes. So you play that. You've played this a lot, Matt. What do you think? Absolutely. It's a great game. And everybody, you get the same nine numbers, but you all stack them vastly differently. Yeah. 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 It's a lot of fun. And with two boxes, you can play eight people without a problem. Yeah. And there's, there's actually a new version. Uh, Is there? What? Number nine, like plus plus or something what? like that. Yeah. <laughs> Don't like, tell me uh, this. It will be at my house by Monday. Yeah. Tyler's like, they made more of this. <laughs> uh, yeah. um, this one. Yeah. It's number nine, like plus plus. I think it's a two player version of number nine, but you can combine both versions to play up to six players. Um, there's a little you get all the way up to 18. You, you, can you get up to 18 with your numbers? Nine plus nine, 18. No, no, no you're just <laughs> whatever. <laughs> uh, no, but you can combine the two together. There's the variations in this game. Uh, I think there's little like square tokens you can put in to fill in spots. Mm. Um, there's other, I was reading about it and I can't remember. Oh, there's, there's a single square. There's, um, a second square. There's a two square that you can put in just to fill in holes and stuff. Um, oh, there's random starting tiles. So not everybody's going to start with the same tile. So then it forces everybody to start building a little bit different from the get go, which is kind of cool. Um, so it switches up the game even more. I might, I don't have this one, but I might check it out. Nice. But that is my number four, number nine. I sadly or is it number nine? sold my copy. I yeah, think I got about five bucks for it. <laughs> yeah. And you probably are glad to get that. I, you know, it's another one of those games that we played as a family after after I played it at your house. I went out and bought it. Oh, you, you got you got burned a few times there, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, uh, played it Different with the taste. Played it with the family. The family liked it, but it was not a game that we went back to in a couple of years. And then mm -hmm. it was like, okay, well, I'm going to clear up some space. So yeah, my, uh, I had fun playing it. It's, yeah, my, my this is one that my daughter loves. So oh, awesome! We get it out and play it. Yeah, fairly. Eh. Fairly frequently. Your, your parents' house, Matt, we've played this a lot. We've played this via FaceTime. It works great on FaceTime. Oh, another hey. FaceTime game. Yeah, we have played it, yeah. yeah. Unlike Tyler, I just put mine in a tote and stick it under my house and keep it in the collection. Whoa. <laughs> that's next level. That's, like, that's your overflow is under your house? Under Overflow is under the house. <laughs> I have taken a lot of smaller card games and started adding them into one of those like photo cases yeah they each yes. have their individual ones and it's funny you said that i just did that with uh like you know 20 of my games that's where and i got all perfect. my love letters and a bunch yep. of rolling rights and it's a perfect place to put a bag yeah a love letter yeah. bag love that's letter probably bag. the next step that same case also works fantastic for uh clank and all the clank games oh, okay each expansion nice. gets its box and you just have the cards and all the pieces for that expansion are ready to go. Oh, we should have an episode just about storage solutions. 
Yeah. Because it is, well, for me, it's becoming a problem. I had to move, I recently moved all my kids' games out of my game room into yeah. the main room in the basement, which is awesome because I have all my hobby games together. And there's this big wall of yellow, uh, <laughs> which cool. I look at it every day. And I, like every time I'm down there, I'm like, it just makes me happy. But, I, but it freed up, you know, five or six uh, cubes in my calyx shelves. Um, but space is, is becoming an issue for sure. Prime so, real estate. Oh, yeah. I mean, it makes me think uh, a little bit harder about bringing a game into my house, you mm -hmm. know, because it's like, well, do I really want this? It's valuable shelf space. It's valuable real estate it's taken up, you know. So maybe we have an episode about storage solutions at some point. Nice. Yeah. yeah. yeah I think so. I like that. You like that? Yeah. Okay. Come up, with that, come up with ideas over here. Yeah. <laughs> Sleeving cards. On, on the fly. <laughs> on the fly. Yeah. yeah. On, the, on the show live. Uh, I'm... Uh, my number four, okay? This is a new addition in my collection. It is designed by Scaff Elias, Richard Garfield, Marvin Hagen, Hegan, and Christian Kudal. And the art is by Dennis Martinets. Uh, this is from Nerd Lab Games. This is Mindbug. So I rec recently had... My Mind Bug and Mind Bug Beyond uh, Kickstarter or uh, Game Found Fulfill. I can't remember which one it was. Uh, this is a little dueling card game. My son Logan loves Unmatched. And so we got this game. He, he has all the cards memorized for every player, every character that he has. I do not stand a chance in that game. So we got this out uh, this last week, and I was like, you cannot look at the cards before we play. You cannot memorize them. You, I, I want, you want to be on I, equal footing. I want to be on a level playing ground. So uh, we started playing Mindbug. Uh, we, I think we've got five or six games in. I've won one. This is just his style of game. It's just his style of game, and I'm okay <laughs> with that because we have fun just playing on. So this yeah. – game you start out each player starts out with three health have you either of you guys played this not yet i have not so you start out with three health and you're just trying to eliminate the other player's health and so you can either play a card and put it in front of you or attack with one of the cards that you already have in front of you um and each each card has different abilities they have a power level you know one to nine or whatever that's how strong the card is um, some of them have play abilities, so when you play it in front of you, you get to do something cool um, or powerful. And some of them have abilities when you attack the other player. Uh, there's you, there's different abilities. So there's one that's like sneaky. And when you attack with a sneaky card, you can only defend the other player can only defend with a sneaky card. Well, if you didn't draft a sneaky, you start out with 10 cards and you uh, draw five, you always draw up to five in your hand. And, but once you go through your cards, you're done. You don't get, unless a card allows you to add from the discard pile. You, once it's discarded, it's gone. Um, so I had five cards. Logan played a sneaky card, started attacking me with it. I realized I didn't have a sneaky card, so I couldn't defend. And so the game lasted like a minute and a half. Oh my so, gosh. <laughs> but something that you can do in this game, both of you have two mind bug cards. And at any time when the other player plays a card, you can say, nope, I'm going to use one of my mind bugs and I'm going to steal that card. So the cards are powerful. Like that sneaky card would have been a great card to steal because I didn't have any sneaky cards in my hand. I should have stolen it, and then that game would have gone on a lot longer. Uh, once you use a mind bug, you, that's it. You got one more. Once you've used both of them, then uh, you can't steal any more cards from the other player when they play them. It makes for some really interesting decisions because I, like last night we were playing, and I've got this hand of powerful cards, and I'm like, okay. If I play this one, there are two cards that I really want to play, but if I play this other one, will it cause Logan to play one of his mind bug cards and steal it so that I can then get these other two cards out with with him having already used all of his mind bugs, right? So there's, there's almost like this, like I'm going to entice him enough with this card so that he'll play his mind bug and steal it, and now I can play the cards I really want to play 
right? So there's some cool things going on in this game. We haven't started getting into the mind bug uh, expansions uh, beyond and um, some of the new stuff and promo stuff that we got, but it's a really fun little two-player nice. dueling card game that lasts anywhere from 90 seconds to you know 15, 20 minutes. So a lot of fun, uh, nice little game with uh, great art. So that's my number four, Mind Bug. There, there are so many good two-player games that yep. have come out like recently. Tons. It's crazy to me. Yeah. And I've always said, you know, two-player games are hard to get to the table and play. Which I think they are, but I've been playing a lot of two-player games, even though it's difficult to get them out, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, Wizards of the Grimoire is one that comes to mind, or all the Undaunted, you know, the whole Undaunted series is fantastic two-player games. Mind Bug Bug sounds awesome. Yeah. It's one one that I want to play, you know? Lorcana, two-player. Seven Wonders Duel. Seven Wonders Duel, well, yeah, it's been out for a while, but that's uh, that's fantastic as well, so. Nice. Mind Bug, I like it. Yeah. My number four is uh, I'm going to go with uh, fast-paced dice chucking games. I'm going to put like Tenzi in that group. Snip <laughs> snap. Snip snap. I don't know snip, snip snap. snap. I know Tenzi. Snip right? snap. Uh, I have it here. Um, but now are you going with one number four or do one you number have multiple four. number four? It's fast-paced dice chucking games. Okay, so you're putting the genre in there. The, the genre in there. Okay, you're breaking the rules a little bit, but I, I, I will allow it. That's 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 great. I like it. I uh, like snip it. snap is uh, everybody has a set of dice that plays up to six, and you roll them out there, and you try and match um, sharks, socks, snakes, and you yell snip snap snake or. We played this one, right? We have played this one. A I few think times. I tried to purge it from my memory, uh, <laughs> but it's fast paced, and it's the first person to, I think, match all their dice up and put them off to the side. Okay, right, cool. So it's I know fast-paced. I know Kevin's a big fan of Tenzi. Oh my! Gosh. Oh yes, he loves. Tenzi. I love that activity. <laughs> <laughs> and I would also put like Nightmare Before Christmas, Merry Madness, and Food Fight in this because you're. Chucking those dice and passing stuff back yeah. and forth and trying to get rid of stuff fast paced. Yeah, we've played uh, Merry Madness and um, Food Fight. Mickey's is it Mickey's Food Fight or something? Mickey's like Food that? Fight, I think. Yeah. yeah, we've played that quite a bit. Family loves that game. I am a little lukewarm on it. I just don't know if I'm a big fan of the uh, the speed dice games. Speed and dice games. Maybe it's just because I'm horrible at them. <laughs> that could <laughs> be o- the reason. But I'm okay at Tenzi. Are you? Yeah, we played Tada. Okay. I got that recently uh-huh. over the holidays. That was a miserable experience. My wife destroyed us. Like, <laughs> Why are some people so good at those I games? I don't know. And it, it just wasn't fun at all. I mean, do you win those a lot, Matt? The the fast like, paced to fast paced uh, dice games. Who who I, wins those? Like, it I seems like Caitlin wins those all the time. Caitlin, I like uh, the. Your other daughter loves it too. Oh, um, Cambry is yes. really good at them too. She is good at them too. Maybe it's a it's a younger. I like the tens thing. where you got those stack of different cards and each time you're going Ooh, for a uh, different thing. I don't yes. just like straight going for the same of all one number. That's that, uh, that gets Tenzi, old. It's like pansy or something. What yeah. is it? About halfway through that game, I want to claw my eyes out. Yeah. <laughs> you're just going through the same numbers. <laughs> but it's not, it's just, yeah, it's not my Yeah, I don't want to go for the same numbers, but there's like ones that have patterns and sure. all yeah. kinds of different combinations. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And Denzi yeah. comes with the whole book. There's 80 different ways to play a dice checking game with 10 dice. Yeah. yeah. And the thing I do like about the game is all the different colored dice because I just love dice. Yeah. I mean, it's and awesome. It's just fun to throw dice. Yeah. And just because I don't And like if you're it. at Obviously, the end of the night and still want to hang out and goof off and talk a little bit and yeah, you can just whip out some Tenzi or. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Yep. Love it. Love it. Number four, fast paced dice checking games. Okay. I like it. Uh, my number three is Santorini. Oh. Have you guys played Santorini? I haven't. Yes. And may have backed the Kickstarter. Oh. I did not back. So tell us about the Kickstarter. What did you back? Uh, I have uh, Santorini coming again, another base copy, but it comes with. They it's like have, a deluxe version type of thing? It's a or? deluxe version slash legacy campaign game. Oh, I do remember. <coughs> I think I, I remember believe it's this. the Sphinx. Okay. All right. So, um, Santorini, I, 
this is a, a, a two player game. I think you can play three players. I've only played two players. It's a very simple game. And it gives me kind of chess vibes actually playing it because it's very tactical, right? So you have two, um, two uh, player pieces on the board and they represent a god. So everybody has a god, they have a god power, okay? So the, the normal mechanic is you move one of your players and then you place a building piece adjacent to where you moved, okay? Um, then uh, and that's the other player's turn and they get to move. So you're trying to stack up these building pieces where they have three levels, and then uh, you're trying to get your play your player up to that third level. And if you can get to the third level, then you win. The trick is everybody has a different power and a different thing that they can do, and they frequently mess with your plans, <laughs> right? And they make it so sometimes you're blocked off of an entire area of the board and you you're, you can't move your piece anymore, or you're just about ready to get to the top of a building and they put a dome on the top of the building. Because when you put a dome on the top, it's uh, one of those blue domes. It actually looks like, you know, Santorini in Greece. Um, once that blue dome is on there, it, it finishes that building, right? And you can't uh, you can't jump on that building or build that build building anymore. Um, some of the abilities that you can do, so Artemis will let you move one additional space. Normally, you can move one space, but Artemis, if you have that god ability, you can get around the board quicker. Um, Atlas lets you build a dome at any level which can really mess with people. So you could have one level and then put a dome on it. And then that, that's just done. You can't do anything else with that, right? Um, Cronus, he, he uh, provides another win condition. So if there are five complete towers on the board, you win. So that's just completely changes the end game. You know, you're, you're going for, well, you could get to the third level with one of your people, or you could work on getting five complete buildings and then you win if you're Kronos. So there are tons of different gods, tons of different ways to play. There's um, basic gods, there's advanced gods. Um, it's just really fun. And it's kind of one of those relaxing games that is very tactical and it's it's very satisfying when you can you know, move in a way that blocks the other player out and you get to the third level and end up winning. And there's a fantastic app that I've played a ton of, which is just an iOS oh, app? Yeah, there's an okay. iOS app oh. that I've played a lot of. It's Great. also on Board Game Arena. Oh, yeah, it is, um, I believe. Yeah. Yep, and I've played a few games with Tyson on that. So Santorini, very simple rule set, but it's got a lot of fun strategy to it. Nice. And it is a good one. That's my number three. And I got my Kickstarter pull up. It is a co-op Deluxe Pantheon edition, so there is a, a cooperative version to play in here, and it's uh, kind of why I backed it. Nice. Okay. Playing Santorini co-op ought to be really interesting. That's intriguing, right? You're, you're I, reading through it. It was uh, you're you're playing against the Sphinx, so could be really interesting. Nice. Cool. I'm excited to play. I still have not played Santorini. Need to try that one out. All right. Uh, my number three is a two-player game. Another one. So another two-player game. Uh, this is one that I fell in love with on Board Game Arena. This is Sobek Two Players. So nice. it's a game designed by Bruno Cathala. Heard of that guy. And Sebastian Pauchon, uh, artist Xavier Gwenefi Duran, and published by Catch Up Games, Pandasaurus Games in the U.S. Um, basically, it's a set collection game, a tile drafting set collection game. Uh, on your turn, you can either draft a tile off of the board or uh, play a tile that you have in your from your hand. Tiles that have abilities you can play from your hand. Um, otherwise, you're playing a set that you've collected, and uh, you're just trying to score the most points over the course of the game. One thing, it does some interesting things. Uh, when you draft a tile, you orient uh, a little pharaoh symbol, and whatever direction it is pointed in, the, the other player has to draft a tile in that direction uh, somewhere on the board. And if you skip over tiles in that line, then you have to take those as a penalty um, and you don't get to collect those tiles. So there's different uh, varying uh, values uh, and different types of tiles that are out on the board. Um, higher probability with some tiles, and you're just trying to uh, collect sets um, until it gets to the point where 
no a player can no longer take an action because there's either no tiles left in the line for them to draw or they don't have any more combos that they can play or any uh, action tiles that they can use out of their hand. Fun little drafting get, tile game. Play this a ton on Board Game Arena. That is my number three, Sobek two player. Z. Nice. Two players. Have you played this? I have. We played it. We played on, on okay. BGA. Yeah, it's a. Uh, it's fun. I like I, it. I really like this one. So yeah, uh, I don't own it. But would you get the physical version? Think? I don't think so because I think it plays so well on Board Game yeah, Arena. I agree. It, with that. It's got that place in my collection. Yeah. So I awesome. think it would be. You know, it's just so much easier to click and. It's like Living Forest. Yeah. Yeah. You. It just plays better on Board Game Arena. Yeah. There's so, some games that are like that. Yeah. I'm gonna go with another simple basic game my number three here is a game designed by klaus mittenberger um they know it in germany as tier off tier and here in america we know it as animal upon animal oh, i awesome. love this pick this is amazing <laughs> <Okay. laughs> there's what 10 versions out there of this game you can play with unicorns and yep. little miniature ones and they have some for kids that are big clunky animals there's one that has a wheel that or like a big thing that you turn, turn as you're playing which and is make crazy. animal sounds and <laughs> yeah. it's haba right it's I mean, haba yeah. it's a haba game it's a haba yeah. game but uh this sees the table quite often multiple times a year yeah with adults yeah it's one of those games that that it's fun to play with the kids and the adults at the same time and it just blows me away the what you can stack and sometimes it's like this is defying the laws of physics. I don't know how, how this is working. You can <laughs> yeah. on top of the gorilla yeah. or the kangaroo. I love it. I love it. I, I tried playing this with my little guy. It was probably a, a year or so ago. I thought he was ready for it. Thirty seconds into it, he grabbed the red dye and put it in his mouth, and I was like, "Nope, no, nope. <laughs> not quite ready." <laughs> yeah, we're, well, we're we're, we'll come back to it. So there is a version called My First Animal Pawn Animal that has massive chunky pieces that i think would he would actually okay be, cool. able, be able to do yeah they're big so, they're yeah they're like big. an inch or they, so tall and they uh I, it was my old game table um i didn't have anything on it and it actually dented my table when, oh, they, wow. when, they, when they fell over <laughs> so oh, wow. they're that chunky <laughs> so maybe that's the one you uh you introduced to the little guy so so that's your number three that, number i like it Matt. Three. that is a great pick so um <clears throat> my number two um, so I said this was on my short list earlier, but it's actually on oh, my list. And that sure. game is what the heck? <laughs> 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 that is my number two. I mean, I, we've already talked about it. Love the game for all the reasons we already mentioned. This is our first crossover, probably our only crossover, but that's my number two is what the heck. All right. My number two, this one was easy to put on my list. Lovecraft letter. Uh, this is easily one of my favorite uh, Lovecraft games or versions. It's the nicest one in production uh, with art by Vincent Dutrait. You got the the nice, beautiful cards, uh, the poker chip tokens. The, the and sleeves that come with it are amazing. Sleeves, the yeah. velvet interior. It has a box, it's unlike pre- most <laughs> love letter games. It's pretty. It's premium. It really is. It is. And just the the HP Lovecraft uh, Cthulhu mythos added into Lovecraft this is this game's a blast i love that you're you can win if you are insane <laughs> you have to win 3 times or if you um, are not insane and win twice having no insanity cards in front of you um, so different ways to win or you can just win outright if you uh cthulhu. play cthulhu in a certain way which right. doesn't happen very often but when it does it's like okay that was awesome yeah all right, let's play again <laughs> i'm not know. even mad that happened you yeah. know yeah that's cool yeah so two to six player lovecraft letter absolutely favorite lovecraft game definitely can play this in 15 20 minutes so. yeah that's fantastic game that it plays really fast that was that was on my short list did not make it but yeah, fantastic I, game. I did not make it to love letter section of my uh, <laughs> games. Looking at, wait, 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 are, they, are they under your house? No, okay. they're, they're in the closet. <laughs> I have a whole on the cupboard door. I have a whole bunch of baskets, and they hold yeah tons of little card games. And That's where all your fast. love letter goes. Yeah, it's a good one. Love letter, love, love letter. That's my number two Lovecraft letter. My number two classic here. We're gonna go with a. Uh, 
Ticket to Ride, but the little versions. Ticket yeah, to Ride, okay. London, New York, but I'm going to pick London. Love it. Fast paced. You can play this two to four players. Wouldn't recommend yep. four. That would get a little chaotic. Yeah. Really two to three works great. Agreed. And it's basically just a stripped down version of the big version. The big version. Right. Yeah. You play with little buses cruising yep. around London. Get a yep. l- little bit of a bonus for locations that you visit type yeah, of thing. Sightseer, sightseeing locations. That's right. Yeah. I, I So I have the Amsterdam one, which I... Hand carts. Yeah, I, I love that one. I would say, I think if you're... Unless you're a ticket to ride aficionado, you don't need more than one of the mini games. I could be wrong. Matt looks I, like he's I, disagreeing with yeah, me. Yeah, I'm probably disagreeing. <laughs> <laughs> I think there there are slight variations there, it, right. to, but but it's not game changing things for sure. Um, but for the completionist in me, it's nice to see them on the shelf all stacked up together. Yeah, right? all nice yeah. and pretty, all yeah. nice and pretty. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I think they're I think they're all pretty fun. Cool. And, and I would say too, um, it is a great introductory game for Ticket to Ride to teach to young kids, right? So yep. I brought it out with uh, my 10-year-old, um, you know, last year sometime. She absolutely loved it. She beat me because I forgot to complete a ticket. <laughs> she uh, she brought that up today, actually. Yeah. <laughs> she uh, mentioned it, right? And uh, it was a great moment for her. It was a lot of fun. She learned how to play. Um, and uh, now, I mean, she's ready to play the big version because it's basically the same thing, right? They're not high scoring. I mean, if you're getting oh, it's 30 quick. points, you're... Yeah, you're doing. You're well. doing very well. Yeah. yeah, right. Most games end 22, 23, and you're like, "Dang it, I missed it." No, I think it's great. Love it. Love it. All right, my number one um, is from a designer, one of my favorite designers. He does um, engine builders better than anybody. Published by Real Grand Games. This is Jump Drive. Uh, okay. Ooh, yep. Jump okay. Drive. Jump Drive is awesome. I love it. It gives me the Race for the Galaxy feel in a much smaller package, mm-hmm. um, and it plays very quickly. It's it's definitely under twenty minutes, or it you know you could play it in twenty minutes, I guess. But a lot of our games go very quickly. Matt and I <laughs> played two player. We played we played a lot. Right. So had like four round games where it's like, I just lost and (laughs) like, what the heck happened? Well, that's what I love about this game is the escalation in the game is just off the charts, right? You get your engine and then all of a sudden, boom, you're getting cards and you're getting all kinds of victory points. So you're trying to get to 50 um, victory points first. Okay. Um, And it has a lot of the same iconography that uh, race for the galaxy and, and roll for the galaxy and new frontiers have, they all share similar iconography. So you have worlds, you have developments and on your turn, you get a handful of cards. You start with five cards and you play either a um, world or you play a development or you can play both. If you play one, you get a you know a development, you get a, a bonus of, I think you pay one less for that development. If you play just a, a world, you get uh, an additional card. If you play both of them, then you don't get any bonus at all. Okay. And then at the end of the round, after you've played and paid for your cards, you get income based on what's on those cards and you get victory points based on what's on those cards. So the whole game is you're trying to build synergies with the cards that you build. So if there's novelty worlds that are blue, some cards will give you bonuses for novelty worlds. You try to get a bunch of those and get your engine going there. There's these uh, chromosomes, little green chromosomes that you're trying to get uh, bonuses by getting synergies with these chromosome cards. And uh, you're just trying to build your engine as quickly as possible. And the game is over, you know, like that, if you can get that engine going. Sometimes you don't get it going. And like Matt mentioned, hey, I got 15 points and uh, the other guy I'm playing against has 55 and the game's over. But there's some games that are really close and come down to the wire. So it gives me that race for the galaxy. Um, It itches, you know, scratches that itch for me in a very small, quick package. So that is Jump Drive. It does have an expansion, which I have not gotten yet which I am makes me sad. <laughs> I need to pick that one up. Yeah, you do. I do. I do. So that's my number one game that plays in 20 minutes or less. Jump drive. <laughs> All right. So my number one, 20 minutes. We could get this in in 20 minutes. Okay. Uh, we. This is a new game. Came out this year. Picked it up at Gen Con. And you and I actually played it not too, not too uh, long ago. Uh, it's Bonsai. Okay. That's 20 minutes, huh? Well, two-player, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, I love this one. 
Yeah, so this is by uh, DV Games, uh, designed by Rosaria. Uh, I, you know what? The, uh, lots of Italian designers, I think, and they did a fantastic job. Yes, they did. Uh, Bonsai plays really quick. It actually plays quicker than I'd like it to because it always ends um, when I still want to keep playing more. Uh, so in this game, you're it's a tile drafting game. You are basically doing two action, one of two actions on your turn. You're either going to meditate. Uh, if you're meditating, you're choosing one of the cards that's face up. So it's another uh, open drafting card game. You take a card and any bonsai tiles, whether it's uh, the wood or the leaves or a fruit or a flower, and add it to your little stockpile as long as you can hold that tile uh, based on other cards that you have. Um, the other action that you can do is you're cultivating. Cultivating is when you're adding to your bonsai tree. You're trying to um, get to uh, open scoring goals uh, before other players do. Uh, there are some different uh, open goals that will score at different tiers. When you get to a certain tier, like say, I think eight wood pieces, right? Um, I can either take that scoring tile for lesser value um, or I can try and add more wood to my bonsai tree and go for a higher valued one. But once I make that decision and pass it up, I can't go back and take the lesser value. And once I take a, a, one of those scoring tokens, uh, no other player can take them. So you're building this beautiful bonsai tree. There's just something relaxing about this game. I've never done uh, bonsai, never trimmed bonsai trees. I've never sat and done that but as far as board game experiences go this makes me feel very relaxed and very it's very enjoyable i love playing this game uh so that is bonsai definitely can be completed in 20 minutes or less or if you read the box 30 to 45 yeah, but those you know. are those are generalizations, generalizations that are very rarely accurate i mean let's be honest <laughs> yeah. usually it takes longer yeah. than what no, the box says this but game yes. always ends before i want it to though it yeah, it plays yeah. really quick as two three players especially if people know what they're doing it's a lightweight game obviously yeah. uh but just very relaxing and and lots of fun yeah, I think last time we played, you squeaked out a win by one one point. I did. Yeah, yeah that was yeah. fun. That was, uh, that was a good time. Very fun game. It's one I need to pick up, I think. All right, my number one. Um, I'm going to go with Shifting Stones here, designed by J. Evan Riot. Um, you, you picked this one even though you never win? <laughs> I never uh, win at this game. Oh, <laughs> my losing. Throw some shade. No, he I, doesn't. I I mean, he, he knows. He knows. I know. <laughs> Play this with the girlfriend, and uh, she will win. How many? What, okay, what's the record here, Matt? She won like eighteen rounds in a row. <laughs> wow, that's like Tyson's record at Railroad Inc. Of not yeah, winning. right. <laughs> yeah. It's rivaling that. It may be worse than that. I don't know. Eighteen yeah. times. Eighteen huh? times. But it always comes down to like one or two points. Like it just. Yeah. It stays very competitive. This one plays up to five players, and I think we've played five or before. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think we played before. Five. I like that this one's on Board Game Arena. Oh, yes. I forget that. It is on Board Game Arena. Yeah. <laughs> I do like the production of it, though. I think it's a really good production. Yeah. Um, I like this one a lot. Yeah. This one is a lot of fun. A little bit of luck involved if you you know get a card that matches what the current board state is. Yes. But Unless, as, as, as you know, I think there's some skill involved as well. If you've lost that many games in a row, I think I am the, I'm the winner of losing <laughs> this game. <laughs> there's definitely skill involved in the game. I yeah. always love the decision of, okay, I could not go for any cards this time and just pass my turn, but I get extra cards for next turn, and then I could – Maybe put out an epic round out there, but I don't know. Sometimes that doesn't work out very well, and then you pretty much lost the game at that point. So Yeah. It's a good one. It is a good one. Definitely plays in under 20 minutes. So I like that. It's a good choice. So I, that wraps up our top five. Should we just recap them real quick? Let's do it. All right. So, Kevin, do you want to recap yours? Yep. Number five, the modern. <laughs> mo the, uh, God, there's, some, there's something going on with the audio here. There, the modern classic, Monster Crunch. Uh, number four, another uh, fantastic game. Number nine, number nine. Uh, number three, Santorini. Number two, What the Heck. And number one, Jump Drive. 
Nice. All right. So my number five was Quicks. Number four, Mindbug. Number three, Sobek. Two players. Number two, Lovecraft Letter. And number one, definitely completable in twenty minutes. Bonsai. <laughs> 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 All right. My number five. What the heck. Number four, I went with the generalization of fast-paced dice-chucking games, such as Tensi and Snip Snap. Number three, I went with Tear Off Tear. Number two, Ticket to Ride London. And number one, Shifting Stones. Awesome. I love it. I think those are all good lists. I would happily play 13, 14 out of 15 on the, <laughs> those lists. <laughs> I'm sure if we twisted your arm, you would play the 15. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right, well, what are some honorable mentions? Do you guys have any that oh, I, uh, didn't I make? A, I had a big long list. Okay, so I, I could have put this as number one, uh, Lorcana. Clearly, yeah, clearly. clearly. But I, I think that I think I've talked about that one enough. Uh, right? Seven Wonders Duel. Seven Wonders Duel. I've yeah. talked about that enough times, though. I felt like I, you know, sometimes you just want a new list, right? Not yeah. Just yeah. the yeah. same overlapping list. I uh, got uh, uh, Cockroach Poker. Was on there? We've talked. I about. thought that was going to be on your list, and so I didn't put it on my list. <laughs> <laughs> I, that, that, I think I deleted you know, that one. <laughs> that probably should have been on the list. Taco Cat Goat Cheese Pizza. Yeah. I Ooh. mean, who doesn't love that one? Guillotine. Have you guys ever played Guillotine? Yeah, I played that. It's been a long I've time. Not played I that love that game. That was another game we used to play years ago. Yeah. Uh, you're cutting off French aristocrat heads and or <laughs> French royalty, and who, who doesn't love that? Yeah, with. Uh, Comedic art, I'll put it that way. Yeah, I love it. Um, this one probably should have made the list. Inside Job. That one, fantastic trick taker. It does play. Ooh, 20 minutes, though? Let's look. I, I'm pretty sure I looked at the box, <laughs> and it said 20 minutes. So, uh, yeah, so I, I'm pretty sure Inside Job. Let, let, we're we're going to consult Board Game Geek. 20 to, 20 to 30 minutes. I, I think this one qualifies more than Bonsai, yeah. to be honest. <laughs> that's, that's arguable. Yeah. I don't know if we've ever played a 20-minute game of it. Uh, I don't know. It, it's an amazing game. We would say that was at the top of all of our lists for 2023. So. Yeah, it's the best game coming out of Gen Con, I think, for, for me anyway. Or, uh, uh, spicy? King Domino? Spicy. 789. I had some old classics from out of the box games. Whoa, that's a throwback. Back it is. I love or uh, Super Circles. Super Circles is on my list too. Oh my gosh. Wow. Those games. We They're, had so much fun with those, those games. Before my time, I think. Yeah. 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 Those are yeah, those are classic. I don't know if you can get Super games. Circles, but seven eight nine was picked up by a different publisher. Oh, was it? So that one's still out there? That one's still out there. Yeah. Spirits of the Wild. Yep, that's a great one. Jaipur. Jaipur's awesome. Uh Point Salad. I had Point Salad. Ooh. And Point City. Ooh, I have yeah. Llama and Don't Llama Dice. Ooh, fantastic. Uh, silver Gold, Shobu, Spicy, you mentioned. Yep. Get Bit. Ooh, yeah. That's another, that's another good one. Have you played Get Bit, Tyler? Uh, don't think so. No. I had a coworker um, 3D print a shark for me to wow. use in Get Bit. Cool. And it is awesome. My daughter painted it with bloody teeth. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> we should play that this weekend. We should Matt. play that this weekend. Yeah. She will be ecstatic about Pass that. Pass the pigs. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. I I own that, but I have not played it. I we ha I saw it in our drawer. It's been probably a decade since we played it, but love it. Yeah. Okay. Um, ten. I think ten. I think play. that pushes the that pushes time the limit frame there a little but bit. It but. can. Okay, let's see here. Let, if you cut be, down the player count, we to could, like it could four make it three. under the bonsai rule, though. Yeah, I think. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> wandering towers. It says fifteen Ooh. to thirty minutes. For no time. way, you that, can't play that game in fifteen. Would board minutes? game geek lie? Let's, okay. <laughs> wandering uh, towers, thirty can't minutes. Stop. Can't stop. That was like oh. right there. Like Ooh. I almost added that. I almost added that one right there. Man, so many good games. When I think of these games on this list, it's like, okay, I've got a few minutes before we have to go somewhere or, or, or it's been a long day. These are the games that I want to play before I crash and go to bed. You know, just right. do something fun with the family or close out a game night with. That's the target for these games. And, and so many of them provide such a great experience in a short amount of time. So. That was a fun list. Yeah, I it was like a very it. fun list. That was fun. That was fun. Do we got anything we're excited about? No. There are some Kickstarters coming up here. 
Cthulhu, I, Cthulhu made, Death May Die? I've been making some blog posts yeah. on our uh, BGG blog. Very uh, Cthulhu heavy. Yes, Ooh. there there have been a Good. number of those. But the one that I was most excited to do was the upcoming crowdfunding projects. Mm -hmm. And there are some good games coming in the next couple months. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It hurts the wallet. Yes. Yeah. I, yeah I'm not sure how I'm going to spread some of these expenses out, but I'm going to make it happen. You're doing it. Flow. Uh, yeah. That, that looks cool. By cool. Henry Audubon from the, and uh, Johnny Pax on there. Um, as one of the designers, Henry Audubon did Cosmoctopus. Um, there was the next Thunder Griff uh, Kickstarter. Etherstone looks like a really cool card game. I'm excited about that one. Um, yeah, there was a, a number of other games that are were on on the cusp. Nice. Um, I'm excited for um, Evenfall. I've talked about this game before. Um, it's coming later this year. It's already out, I think, in Europe. But uh, I don't. Is it DLP that has U.S. publishing? I am not sure. But it's uh, <laughs> it's on pre order. I haven't actually pre ordered it yet. I'm I'm tempted to do it. Okay. Um, What's it? Uh, it is it deck builder? Well, it, and it's kind of been compared to it's uh, to Fifty First State. It's a tableau builder. It's got this uh, this you know factions that are different. Um, it just it looks interesting to me, and the art is incredible. Um, it's yeah. just one that intrigues me that cool. I've been looking at a little bit more. Um, that's even fall. So I'm excited about that one. Um, I talked about, uh, talked about Lorcan already. Obviously super excited about that. Don't need to talk. You about did. That I don't remember that. <laughs> yeah. Have you heard about Lorcana? Yeah. This game is amazing. <laughs> oh, look, squirrel. Let's do a deep dive. Uh, and then take a dried legacy. Yeah. Let's get, let, we should get back and start. Take a dried legacy, Matt. Well, maybe. Are you let's guys playing it. tonight? Probably not. Probably not. No, but probably not. We'll play. We'll play tomorrow morning. I actually got shipping notification for Seventh Citadel. You did from game F from Kickstarter. I backed this in October of 2020. This is my oldest outstanding Kickstarter oh as well. Yeah. I got a shipping notification for it finally. You so did? It's coming. I believe so. Yeah. Uh -huh. Did you even get yours? No, I didn't. This, I got is, the, this is me being shocked. <laughs> I got the lock. Yeah, right. I'm always the last one. Uh, I got the like locked in your address. It's coming soon. Yeah, I think I got um, a shipping notification for them. I have a bunch coming. So, so it's been so long. Are you still excited about it? I don't know yet. <laughs> I might have to open it, look at it. I we'll see it now. Or, or, I was honestly. Or do you just sell it? I was honestly already considering just maybe selling it just without selling opening it. it. Right. I have tons of Seventh Continent content that. And I have you played it yet? Have not played through. I've played. Yeah. We played a couple times, and I would need to do a full rules review uh, review to play it again. I think Seventh Cit Citadel fix some things and streamline some things and supposedly things are going to be better. Hmm. Right. Yeah. It's been years since this was backed. So four that's years, cool. almost that's coming, now. three and a half. So that's yeah, exciting. That one's coming. And then Gale force nine has kind of like containers are on the water and starting to ship for what is it? Firefly 10th anniversary edition. Oh, oh. Ooh. Big box. Okay. Everything, all contents, upgraded chits. Okay. Do you have a table big enough to play Firefly? Yes. That is the you question. You just have to stack your cards in card stackers. and but Firefly, that is a table, table hog, right? It is a table hog, but it is awesome. Okay. I still haven't played Firefly. Um, it is a fun game. It is very, very th theatrical and matches the show. You can, you can buy bonnets and be shiny, and it, it's fun. It's very cool. Well, that's exciting. Nice. I'm excited for Dune Part 2. I Ooh. know you are. Yes, you are. Next month, right? popcorn bucket, are you getting that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not sticking my hand anywhere close to that thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's the worst popcorn bucket ever. And just, it looks just awesome. So everybody knows out there listening, I collect popcorn buckets. We probably have like 40 or 50 of them in my house, and I do not want that one. <laughs> Oh, it is the epic. ugliest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, it's terrible. I think it looks awesome. Are you getting it? <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> All right, cool. No, that's exciting. Yeah, it should be a good show. That's all I got. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, that's all I got. I mean, I'm I'm excited playing games lately. I've been having just a ton of fun playing games. So Yeah. Um, We've got big game night on Saturday. I 
think you guys are probably doing your own thing, but you're welcome to come if you're not. But uh, we're still figuring out what's going on this weekend. Okay. So uh, how long are you in town for? Till Monday. Leave Monday, Monday morning. Yeah. Okay. We're recording this on a Thursday, so we got a we got a fun weekend ahead of us. Nice. It's gonna be good. Awesome. So I think that wraps up our episode. It's been fun to uh, get back to the recording table and talk about some games. And yeah. uh, tune in next time to hear uh, maybe. Uh, our wife's son. So it should be fun, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll see how that one goes. It's or be Septima. Good. I don't know. Or, we'll, we'll, oh, we'll, well, maybe Septima. Hey, you know. Yeah, we'll see. Tune in to whatever we, uh, we put out. It's going to be great. Whatever. Yes, it's going to be fantastic. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Longest Turn Board Gaming Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode and you want more Longest Turn in your life, please check us out on Instagram. Also, be sure to check us out on Board Game Geek, where you can join our guild, Guild 3947, and check out our blog, where we post all our show notes and occasionally post more detailed reviews. If that's not enough for you, we have a Discord server. If you want to play a game with us on Board Game Arena, join our Board Game Arena group, The Longest Turn. Until next time, thanks for listening. Told Saints. Goodbye. See you later. Hello. Mike check. Mike. Mike check. <laughs> Alright, ready? Ready. It's the best part of the show right here. <laughs> this is it's been <laughs> it's been so long. It's, it's been, been a month. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm glad we're here. I'm excited. This is gonna be yeah. good. Alright. Another game that I've been playing. This uh, mic just sits and bounces. Does like no, nobody's touching the chair. I'm not even on the chair, and it just like sits and bounces. It's I watch probably, it like probably, out of my peripheral vision. I'm probably bouncing it's my like, leg or something. I don't know.